Hello traders, and welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris episode. Did you know that there's a way that traders are able to analyze how other rational traders out there are analyzing and working their way through the social situations and making decisions in these high-risk environments that are the markets? The way that they're doing this is called game theory. Game theory applies to much more than just video games or board games. It goes well beyond that. And we're going to talk about exactly what it is and how we can better understand the trading landscape with game theory. Let's get going. Game theory helps us better understand how people are making decisions when the stakes are high. It helps us understand what is going through their minds and having any edge or any type of further understanding of what your opponent in the market might be doing can absolutely be a massive advantage. So really what it is, is something that seeks to explain the mathematical and psychological factors driving the decision making of independent actors in a competitive setting. The concept is based on the premise that rational players in a game or situation aim to maximize their payoff and minimize their losses. Don't we all want that in the end, naturally? It also looks at how all of these players make decisions in response to different strategies employed by their competitors. The result of these analyses will help us predict the human behavior that's going on in this strategic setting that we're talking about. There's a book by the name of Theory of Games and Economic Behavior where scientists John Van Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern explored how game theory can be used to better understand changes in the economy, and this was published in 1944. So the concept of applying game theory to give a trader a competitive edge in understanding the financial landscapes has been around for a very long while, and there's a reason for that. Let's talk about what the main components of game theory are. And there's really three of them that we can divide everything into. We have the players, the game participants represent the main element of game theory. That's what the players are. These are the people that are involved. So in the world of trading, other traders are going to be the players. Then we have strategies. The different tactics employed by the players in the game pursuant to their objective are going to be considered strategies. This component also includes how players would respond to the strategies used by their opponents. All strategies must be developed in line with the game rules. So all of this falls under strategies. And our third component is end results. The payoffs or losses or the outcome of the game as a whole. All players are assumed to already know the potential results and their implications before participating. So in short, as a trader, the end result is obviously going to be greater financial progress or loss of financial progress. And the traders that are in the market hopefully understand that they can either gain or lose money. If we think about it from a business point of view, for instance, game theory could help a business manager figure out the most optimal solution from available choices. This can be done by analyzing the costs and benefits of each competitor in their specific industry and attempting to predict how interactions between different participants affect the actions and responses of others. That's really what we want to do in the trading world. We want to get an idea of the situations that other other traders are in, which can help us better understand why and what decisions they might make, which then in turn can lead to having an idea of where the market itself might be going. Let's talk about some examples here with the prisoner's dilemma, which is arguably the most famous game theory scenario. It is a paradox in decision-making analysis in which two people must decide while keeping in mind that the decision of the other can impact their own outcome. Generally, the prisoner's dilemma concludes that two individuals with competing incentives who choose to act in their own self-interest will likely produce a suboptimal outcome. In this classic example, there are two prisoners. We're going to call them Karen and Roger. They've both been arrested for, we'll say, robbing a jewelry store. The prisoner's dilemma represents the game of social interaction between them when the district attorney decides to press the matter by offering each of them a set of choices. 
The district attorney would tell Karen and Roger that they're both going away or they're both going to get two years in jail for the original crime. However, if either of them snitches on the other, they won't get any jail time at all, whereas the other person that's being snitched on will get 10 years. They both get 10 years of jail time if they snitch on each other, but if they decide not to snitch on each other, they'll only get two years. Then, Karen and Roger are split up. Now, they don't know what the other person will do, so they have to make their decisions independently. Now, Karen and Roger have had a wild time stealing jewelry together, but they don't have any special loyalty to each other. There's no particular reason to think that either of them won't stab the other in the back to better benefit themselves. And yet, they both have to make a decision that favors them the most, regardless of what the other person decides. Game theory then arranges their choices and potential consequences into a grid known as the playoff matrix, which we can see here. On the left-hand side, we can see Karen and Roger. Below that, it says confess, and it says don't confess. Then we have our confess and don't confess columns, and in the top left corner of those columns, we have five years, five years, which is going to represent a hypothetical scenario that this is their plea deal. If they choose to confess themselves, they can lock in a safe five years. On the other options, if one of them confesses and the other doesn't, we end up with 10 years and zero years, and if the other confesses and then the other one doesn't, we end up with zero years and 10 years. Now, if none of them confess, we could say that we end up with two years each. On paper, the two years is going to seem like the obvious choice of what we would want, but the problem is we don't know what the other will choose, and for that reason, we want to find what is called Nash equilibrium, and we would want to confess in this scenario because that would guarantee in five years and take away the risk of the additional other five years should the other person be snitching on us while we ourselves are not confessing. So this is the concept of the prisoner's dilemma. Next up, we have another game theory concept called the chicken game. And what this does is it models two drivers that are driving in opposing directions headed toward a single lane bridge. Both of them have the same strategy. They want to get on the bridge. So each driver expects the other to swerve away so they can pass through. But neither is willing to make way for the other since they would then be called a chicken and having submitted to the other. And yet it is still in everybody's best interest that conflict be avoided, of course, because then they both lose if they crash head on into each other. If both drivers decide to swerve, there is no impact, hence a score of zero. However, this isn't the desired outcome for any of them because that means that none of them have used the bridge. If they both decide not to swerve, they are headed towards the worst possible outcome, which is going to be a head-on collision and everybody loses. So using game theory, the optimal solution would be for one of the drivers to swallow their pride and swerve, even if that means being called a chicken. Now let's talk about it as it applies more so to trading. At its core, trading securities is all about making the right decision. Our choice of what to trade or when to buy or when to sell and how much to commit can make the difference between a huge payday and a colossal loss. That's why game theory in trading is just so darn important. It can help us as traders make optimal decisions even when we don't know for sure what decisions other traders will make. And yet those decisions can significantly impact the overall outcome of their and really our trading activities. Using game theory, traders can also better understand market behavior and how it would be affected by certain changes or developments. For example, when the market is volatile, traders have a number of fixed options, hold, buy more, or sell. The ideal outcome involves maximizing their profit and minimizing their loss. Their decision is contingent on the thought process of other traders and whether they decide to alter their trading strategy in pursuit of their own optimal outcome. Game theory can help traders map out how these options themselves might play out and their resulting impact so they can make a more informed trading decision. 
So at the end of the day, we as traders are always looking for some type of competitive edge, something that will give us either some insight about what our opponent is doing or something that will allow us to do our own actions better. And game theory is another thing that we can add to our arsenal to help us get a better and broader view and a more accurate view of what's going on and why it's going on in the markets. But until next time, good luck, happy trading, and I'll see you on the other side. Pshew.